Facebook ads are a great way to grow your store sales, but they can feel intimidating to set up and you wanna make sure that they're profitable for you to run so that you aren't overspending. Thankfully, there is one type of ad that is super easy to set up, it doesn't cost a lot of money to run every day and converts up to 70% of traffic into sales. Sounds sweet, I know. And you can actually set it up one time then let it run on autopilot. It's called a dynamic product ad and it connects to your Shopify store's product catalog to show the exact product that they saw on your site. You can show this ad to someone who viewed your site recently but didn't purchase for whatever reason as a gentle reminder to take another look and complete their purchase. You've probably seen it before in action with different brands when you go to their site and then their products seem to follow you around everywhere on the internet. Yeah, so that's what it is and now you know what it's called. So let's talk about how to set it up now. First off, you need to set up the Facebook sales channel, which you can find under the sales channel area of your Shopify store. This syncs your product catalog automatically with Facebook. So all of your product information, like your photos, description, pricing, inventory is all up to date. Make sure you also have your Facebook pixel set up as well, because this is going to track the activity on your site. Like if a potential customer viewed a specific product or collection on your site, or if they added the product to their cart, but didn't purchase. It's not 100% accurate due to the Apple users being able to opt out of online tracking. However, it's pretty good and will give you the most realistic look at how your ads are performing as well. Luckily, Shopify makes this easy to set up as well through the Facebook sales channel process. So just follow the steps of setting up this sales channel and you should be good to go. Now for setting up the ad in Facebook. Okay, so I'm in my Facebook ads manager now and I'm just going to click create for a campaign. And then I'm gonna choose sales because what we want here is this catalog sales. So we'll go ahead and click continue and we'll just have it be a tailored sales campaign instead of doing everything manual and we'll hit continue. Now you can go in and name your campaign however it's going to be the most relevant for you so you know what you're doing and how you set this up. We then want to make sure we set our we have our pixel connected here which we've already done and then have our conversion event set to purchase. So we'll just click in here and choose purchase. Now for our daily budget, I'm just going to keep this at $20. I'm also going to have it just be a continuing campaign and not set an end date. You could set an end date as well, but the goal of this is to set it up and then let it run on autopilot and you can make changes depending on how it is performing, but we'll just keep that there and not do an end date. For our audience, you can choose how you want to target this. If you want to do a broad audience, if you want to have it based off of interest, but I want to use this as a retargeting campaign. So that means that they came to my site, but didn't purchase and then retarget that person. So for that, I'm going to select in here for custom audience. And I'm going to choose that they came to my website in the last 30 days. Now this is an audience that I have already set up. You can set up your audience if you click on the three kind of menu items here. You can click on audiences and set that up there. You can also click on create new and set it up here. So I can also click in here, click custom audience. And what you would want to do if you were doing a retargeting campaign as well is you would click on website and next. You have your pixel set up here. You would set your retention span of however you'd like. So maybe you say, okay, I wanna do this for seven days. So we can say seven days and all website visitors. You could also have it be people who went to specific pages of the site if you're wanting to really highlight specific pages or different content on your site as well. And then you're just going to name your campaign. And we'll go ahead and click create audience. So now we've got that set up. So I'll actually just remove this 30 days then, and we'll just keep it at seven days. So it's really a fresh audience that we're working with. We do want to exclude the people who have already purchased from us though. So we can click on exclude. And here we can use a similar audience that we've already created, or let's, let me show you how to do that again. We'll click on create new and custom audience. We'll say website again, next. And for events, we would say from our events, um, you should be able to see a purchase in here. I'm not sure why that's not showing up right now, but we'll just go ahead and say initiate checkout here and we'll do this seven days. Again, ideally I would like to do purchase here um, and have that event if it was available. So again, we'll just name this. Okay, so now it's added it in here. So let's just remove the purchases from here. 
and I want to actually have that at exclude. So we'll click on exclude, click in here, and we're going to say website purchases seven days. So we are including anyone who's been to our site in the last seven days based on our Facebook ads pixel, but we're excluding anyone who has purchased in that time period as well because we don't want to show them ads um, if they've already actually purchased. So now we can keep the other targeting the same. Again, you could go in and do more interest-based targeting, um, but this is just how I'm gonna be setting it up for a retargeting campaign. So now we're gonna be actually adding in our ad creative. So here, let me just choose our Instagram account. So that way it can show on Facebook or Instagram. I'm also gonna turn on the ad preview so we can see that happen. So we could choose for the ad setup to add in our images or videos manually. However, for this to be working really automatic for us, I'm gonna choose catalog. And then instead of just a single image or video, I'm gonna choose carousel. Now I'm going to go in here. We have our catalog here, which is our Shopify product catalog. We've got 20 products pulling in from our store. And our product set here, which is just our different collections that are being pulled in. So I'm gonna say for here, all products. Um, however, if you wanted to have it be just a collection of products that you were highlighting, you could go in and choose that specific one. So I could choose just to highlight the book collection if I wanted to, um, but I'm just going to change it to all products. So it's going to be a more relevant one as well. I also sometimes will do a just featured collection of your kind of top products that you're wanting to promote. And now for our catalog cards we're just going to have this be a single image so each image is its own product that it's linking to and for our creative for our headline here this is going to be dynamically pulled in to this area here so to have it pull in dynamically from our catalog i'm going to click on this plus and i'm going to say name and you can see it now updating there. We can also add in a description that'll show on some platforms, but not all of them, and not on a lot of mobile devices as well. But we can click on add description, and we can do the same here. We can click on here, and you could choose description. If you had a marketplace where you had different brands, you could choose to show the brand name, uh, the price if you wanted to as well, if you were wanting to highlight those things. But I'm just gonna select description for it to pull in. It's probably yeah, gonna cut it off a good bit, um, but this is just an example of how you can have that shown. You could also just type in something that you wanted as well and just have that be static for all of the different product cards. Now our primary text, which is gonna be up here at the top. So we can just type in a product text. It's gonna be relevant no matter what the product is that's being featured in the carousel. So for here, let me just type this in. You don't want to make it too specific because then it may not be relevant to the product that's shown since it's going to be showing that product depending on what product the viewer is most likely to engage with. So we're just keeping it a little bit generic, more of a tagline that we use on our store. And we've got our shop now button here. For our destination, this is where they're going to be sent for the last image in the carousel, which is your logo here. Um, that would get added in. So we're just gonna have a link to our site. Okay, so we've added in our logo here and let's just add a card here and do a profile card and that's gonna show this on the last carousel card. It'll have our photo if we click in here. This is our profile photo and it would have just the same text that's being pulled in. If we click over. Uh, our see more text and then that would take us to this link here for our website so that's got that set up and now you've got the tracking here selected for your ads pixel so we can see how people are engaging with this ad and then you just need to click on publish to publish this ad and have it be reviewed by facebook and then start showing to your audience so this ad shows to people who have recently come to your site but didn't purchase which helps keep the ad cost targeted and lower overall but how do you get someone to come to your site for the very first time? You can create different ads for this to let your ideal customer know that your brand and products exist. And I actually have a Facebook ads crash course that shows you how to set up four different types of ads step-by-step. -step. Plus how to get your audience targeting right so you don't waste money showing your ads to people who are never gonna purchase from you. You can check out that course over here and it's only $37 for all the training. And if you're looking for free traffic to your Shopify store, then check out this recent YouTube video over here that goes over my top three free traffic sources.